<laughs> I'm whispering for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. I'm a Nick. I'm Adela. I'm a Eric. And we have joining us my hermano, Alexander, as well as our old, old friend, Mr. Mr. Nick. Why don't you let us introduce our fucking selves? Yeah. I'm Alexander Newman. I agree. <laughs> I'm Mr. Nick. <laughs> Ad- Adela and Eric said that they had many topics they wanted to discuss. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, I don't know. Do if we, I don't know if we want to get that deep right off the bat because it's yeah. a pretty. It's a pretty. It involves young children and semen, so it's an intense it's topic. True. We should build up to it. How's everybody been doing? <laughs> Did you happen to see the heavyweight fights last weekend, buddy? Uh, the Chael Sonnen, are you talking about? Yeah, Chael or the or the Stipe. Or the Stipe, white yeah, guy, I did, I did, yeah. Smaller white guy versus bigger black guy, or smaller white guy versus bigger black guy? Did yeah. You see either of them? Yep, I did, I both did. Both of them? I thought... Uh, smaller guy, white guy won both? I thought Chael going up and fighting Rampage did, did exactly, did exactly yeah. what he had to do. I was pretty impressed, be quite honestly. Be but... The uh, we both, I was impressed with Stipe and Shale. Yeah, the Stipe fight, Francis and Ganu. Talk it. about a letdown. Letdown. Let's, let's talk about a hype up and then a letdown. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be fine against anyone who can't uh, Maybe. do that. I want to see him fight uh, Derek Lewis. Yeah, we all do. The Black yeah. Beast versus yeah, the, Black the Beast. Cameroonian Predator. Yep. Yeah, we all want to mm-hmm. see that. That's the next one. But they're doing DC and Stipe Miocic now. Which I don't know how I feel about. I love it. I couldn't ask for anything more. Really? I love it, dude. I think it's, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I love it, dude. Daniel Cormier is 13-0 and 0 at heavyweight. He's a champion light heavyweight. Okay. If he wins, he's 14-0 at heavyweight. He got both belts. Well, he retire? retires best of yeah, all time. Yeah, retire though right after that. I, I mean, would if I, I, I guess it would. I guess it wouldn't really fuck anything up if he retires afterwards. The divisions both suck. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. The John Jones brought to you by <laughs> MMA Hour. <laughs> <laughs> John yeah. Jones, John Jones coming back. Is he? He should. Oh. 2018. John Jones, Brock Lesnar, according to Dana <laughs> White. <laughs> according to Dana White, John Jones, Brock Lesnar coming back. 2018. And then Nate Diaz. Well, all I know is that Chael is fighting, <laughs> Chael, Chael is fighting either Frank Mir or Fedor next. Yeah. Either one of those is fun, bro. We should try and go to that. I'm not. I can't. I'm so sad. Yeah. You're out. I'll be to, out of town Fedor. that weekend. Fedor versus Frank it's in Chicago. Mir. How much is it gonna cost though? Probably 50-ish. like fifty bucks. Yeah. That's not that much money. No. Mm-hmm. Go for me, dude. Go in my stead. When is it? April twenty eighth. Saturday. Why don't you go? So I'll be in uh, South Carolina. April twenty eighth. What are you doing there? I got a big giant conference for three days that I'll be taking. A bus out to rent in about seven buses, about like 400 of us from Chicago, <laughs> heading out to South Carolina. It's gonna be a really good time, but uh, but yeah, I'm sad I'm gonna miss that fight though. Next fall, I'll be making my way out to North Carolina oh. for the uh, Tree Care Industry Association. We're what going is, back. What does that entail? It's just a bunch of arborists that you know get together. People try and sell other arborists big expensive machinery that uh. you know they don't actually need <laughs> <laughs> and other equipment and the like but i'll be right there with you oh the carolinas that's right yeah but that's next year you're talking about next year okay so I'll not be, really together but i'll be in green bay in a couple of weeks for the <laughs> wisconsin arborist association <laughs> yep eric's had a pretty uh, decent amount to drink tonight <laughs> heavy <laughs> heavy amount to drink tonight <laughs> I love also that when you walked in and I offered you a beer, you just right away. Yeah. <laughs> I would love yeah. a beer. It's funny. Every time Eric gets, like, really drunk, he turns into the definition of a rascal. I'm what you'd call a social butterfly. He's <laughs> <laughs> just a rascal. Wait, so how long do these arborist uh, conferences usually last? Uh, usually three days and some change. Is it is it mostly, like you're watching presentations or are you actually like doing field work also or what's going on? Uh, well, there's a lot of stuff. There's uh, presentations. There's like, uh, just like the trade floor where there's a bunch of different vendors trying to show off their stuff. <laughs> like they're, are they vending? I mean, there's, I mean, like we're talking climbing gear. We're talking oh, okay. like giant chip trucks. That's what we're, we're talking, talking like 
quarter million dollar freaking what machines that'll fucking grab Damn. a tree, cut it. It'll cut a tree down. It'll debark it. And oh, then it'll chip it all like up in show. thirty seconds. I fucking seen those things. Yeah, they segment them into like yeah. the like the telephone pole sizes. It's uh-huh. like perfect every time. Cool. Yes, sir. Yeah, those yeah. things are really fucking. They cool. also yeah. do raffles like uh-huh. with expensive like shit too that you could win. I won climbing rope in a raffle. One of our other people they won a a chains a climbing chainsaw like a six hundred fifty dollar chainsaw, in a raffle. That's that's. That's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. So they're they're giving away. I'm just there for the koozies, <laughs> if I could be honest. <laughs> you came back with like 25 koozies. <laughs> Eric just slapped our cat in the face. I did. <laughs> we had a bunch of dogs in our premises today. It was just a dog day. Pup. We're talking puppies. We're talking <laughs> mature dogs. We're talking middle-aged dogs. We're, we're chalking middle-aged dogs. What, yes, sir. What else are we talking? Golden, golden doodle, golden retriever mixes. The double golden mix. So it was once. It was once a golden, and then it was a golden doodle, and then it got mixed with a golden again. Yep. Double golden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So a lot of these black people get wild with them dogs. A lot of pup play. (laughs) Why were there? Why so many dogs though? It's just the white neighborhood. (laughs) (laughs) This is what happens in the suburbs. Why don't we go southern? (laughs) So you had. I assume then you had a good time at your whole your whole family bonanza today. I mean, as good as a time as you can have post. Yeah. Post mortem. Post mortem, yeah. But yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. That's good. A lot of, lot of, lot of people together, probably, right? Yeah, everybody just came, kind of came together. Yeah. Trying to cheer everybody up. We all went bowling. Oh, there you go. I think I the the first game I did okay, and then the second game, I think I bowled like. A thirty-three, <laughs> oh. a gentleman's thirty-three. <laughs> Are you sure you're a man if you bowl a thirty-three? <laughs> no, I can't say I bowl a thirty-three, but I rarely beat a hundred. <laughs> I'm gonna mostly blame the alcohol for the low score. Mm-hmm. Makes you better. I think it kind of loosens yeah. you up, yeah, a little bit. And not when you abuse it. <laughs> All them cheap pitchers, deli, man. Delhi alcohol free right now. Yeah. Yes, I'm alcohol free. Is that because you're the designated driver? Or is that just because you're a responsible young woman? I'm a responsible power woman. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't you wearing a pantsuit? <laughs> you know, it's the weekend. It's been a rough week. Sometimes you gotta play casual. You can't always have the pantsuit on. Yeah. But she's still rocking the shoulder pants. <laughs> <laughs> Rocking those shoulder pads since 1980. True. <laughs> well, you, you said you had all these controversial topics. <laughs> yeah, we, we also had stuff that you and I wanted to talk about as well, too, Nick. That's true. Yeah. So important, real shit stuff. I guess let's get... Do you want to get in, right into the meat and potatoes of the... All right. So... In, I'm in, I just, this is our first week of spring semester back at school, and I'm in a human sexuality class, and I was reading the first chapter, like, good student I am, because some people don't read the assigned readings. Anyway, (laughs) I was reading in the chapter that, um, boys and new Dolly, um, when, they turn seven or eight in their society. It is normal for them to begin being sexually active with seven or eight, seven or eight with boys that are maybe like 10, 11, 12. Boys and boys, you're talking about? Boys yep. and boys, yes. Boy, boy. And so. Boy, boy. Boy, boy. <laughs> like um, Where's New Dolly? I don't really know. I, I actually, it's I it's it's interesting because we'll we'll I have to um, I have to pick to do a presentation in class, and so I'm doing it on this topic because I found it very interesting. But anyway, so once a boy turns seven or eight, 
Um, they believe that they cannot enter into puberty until they have drank another boy's semen, and that's where the 10, 11, 12-year-olds come in. And so they have to... So up until they get to um, their teenage years, then it switches and they're only allowed to have sexual relations with late with women they're no longer allowed to suck other men's dicks or drink their cum um and and they they think that semen is similar to a mother's milk and that's why they have them drink it um and then they also drink uh a sap from a tree because they think that uh like regenerates more semen without it just to pop back in, New Delhi is the capital of India. Okay. So, yes. You are so, correct. just in the capital, they do this? This is not an India wide thing. I can't imagine the billion people are doing yeah, this, right? That's what I. Okay. Maybe. I mean, like I said, I it was literally just a small, like, paragraph in a whole entire chapter that's talking about that. But I'm going to choose that as my research topic for the semester. Um, for the whole semester. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Eric and I got into this debate. Like we, we, Eric and I get into debates all the time. So we got into this debate because Eric's like, "Well, if this is happening, why isn't anyone trying to do something about it? Like, why is like, why aren't people trying to stop these fucking seven year olds from drinking someone else's cum?" And I said, "Well, <laughs> because I feel like as Americans and as people from like a first world country." We tend to look at other cultures and be like, oh, that's weird, and not taking the time to view it from their perspective. Like, yeah, that's fucking weird to us, and, like, I would never want a 7-year-old to suck a 12-year-old off and get jizz to the mouth on. Like, take a full load. I would never want that for a child. You're 22 years old, and you don't want to take a load in the mouth, if I'm correct. (laughs) Well, all I can say is that... (laughs) I mean, I I agree to a certain degree that, uh, you know, you have to take cultural context into account. But I think in this particular case, this is some pretty fucked up and wild shit. And I can't imagine that, like Alexander was saying, the majority of the Indian population is on board with this shit. Because this is a pretty insane... Like, because the, the weirdest thing is that if at, like, whenever you become a man by, you know, like reaching you know puberty or whatever like 14 and then you're only allowed to fuck women doesn't that almost make it like a weird like cat and mouse game for the younger kids then because they're trying to like find some guy that they'll be able to turn to like like suck off like what (laughs) well the way i see it is if you just okay so culture and science are like different things right but if we know scientifically that drinking cum does not in fact make you be, like get to puberty quicker preach don't you kind of feel like like i don't feel like you should just make it illegal or something or but don't you think like an education process would be helpful like if they just realized this is just like a weird superstition that is actually provable that it has no effect whatsoever on your puberty uh yeah. prowess and, and my... <laughs> and then if they want to keep going that's just for fun but don't say it to go to puberty just say it because we like our boys to suck other boys Cox, right? Yeah, and like I'm not I'm not denying that that has to have some psychological like because then that kind of means that everyone men in their society at least are some sort of bisexual because their first sexual experiences are with men and then I was also like throwing into the like debate as well just to point out was that um like what happens if you're a gay man and then like so, like, you're still kind of, like, figuring that out, especially when you're, like, that young, like, seven, eight, nine. Like, you can't really, like, know what's going on yet. And then you're, like, able to, like, experiment with men. And then your society's like, no, now you're only allowed to ever touch women. Like, is it okay to, like, after puberty, I guess, then, if, like, how do they accept gay men then if they're letting you suck dick when you're nine years old? I would, I'm going to be honest. I would have to assume that if they're super young, right? They probably don't look at it like a fun sexual experience. Like it, I'm assuming it's just purely to get the cum in their mouth to become men quicker, right? So like when they're when they're getting with women later on, like I don't th- the way I'm seeing it in my head, which I'm trying not to see it that much in my head, but the way I'm seeing it, <laughs> I don't feel like the seven, eight to eleven year old boys look at it like fun sex. I'm gay, then switch to 
straight. I think it's just like trying to get the cum in the mouth then to get to the point of banging the women. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of the way I'm seeing it. Like, I don't think one has a ton to do with the other in sexual context. So my big <laughs> issue with it was right back to the science versus culture thing. Right. Was if we know and it is pretty well certain that let's say 85% conservatively 85% of males on the earth don't drink cum to go through puberty and the rest of them go through puberty normally isn't it some Way sort more 85% yeah i'm saying yeah, super okay, okay. super conservative let's say they've got a billion people we'll call it 15% of okay. the population right. they drink cum because they think it's going to be it's what leads them to puberty but if we know as a modern society and a developed society that these young children don't have to ingest an older child's semen and be put into these awkward <laughs> sexual acts sorry isn't it our responsibility as a more developed society to inform these people like hey you don't have to suck off another kid and drink their cum to become a man. Like, this is something that will just happen. And that's where the debate fell off, was because culture versus we should tell these people, you don't have to do this. Like, if you want to if you wanna drink cum, go for it. But, like, don't be fooled. Like, this is something <laughs> that you have to do, you know? Yeah. All I know is I don't I don't understand how the Indian education system would not be informing children if like if if there's as many people you know that this happens as you as you've been suggesting from like you know what you read uh, I can't imagine that it's not like Indian authorities to one degree or another wouldn't know about it. It seems pretty insane that nobody's really <laughs> really do like addressing addressing it at all like. It, but as as far as whether a, a developed nation has the the responsibility to educate them on this, I would say maybe if it was like a, like a government policy that like mandated that the children had to, um, you know, drink the semen of twelve year olds in order to become men in the society. If it was actually like instituted, like. There was a set law, yeah. Then I would say 100%. That's human rights violations. But if it's the culture itself and it's more negligence on the part of the authorities and the educators that they're not doing anything, but it's not something that they're mandating, I don't necessarily think that we have a responsibility, though, to do it. I think definitely... I mean, yeah, that's fucked up for sure. And we should probably try to, like, encourage their, you know, infrastructural system to tell them not to do that shit but we shouldn't be sending in like the national guard to like <laughs> break break up blow jobs yeah <laughs> the fucking cum police right like <laughs> now mr nick you've been very quiet on this issue so far and also and you are you work in the medical field so you you have <laughs> you're a source of credibility yeah, yeah. <laughs> we i i need i need to understand what's going on right now I would just like to say, um, coming on this podcast, I did not expect to be talking about little boys and drinking semen in India. I'm very feeling very uncomfortable, and I don't feel like being here no more. <laughs> so I'm passing it back on. Here you go. All right, then. Changing the topic a little bit. Just slightly, though. Um, so like in Af I don't know what African tribes do. I feel like I'm just grouping too many people together right now. But some African <laughs> tribes, right? They're like manhood rituals. They do crazy shit, right? They Gen general mutilation. Genital mutilation. Yeah, that was yeah. Right. Uh, or they stick their hands in bees and stuff like that too, right? Oh, yep. I've never heard of that. Yeah, um, bees on their dicks. And shit. Bees on yeah. their dicks, yeah. In my sexuality class, we had to fill out this agree and disagree form and had just like all of these different like sexual like topics on there um and then we got handed somebody else's paper and we had to like go across the room for agree or disagree with what they chose and i was like um really shocked at the amount of people that said um 
that wh- what is it called when like they cut women's clitorises off they do it a lot yeah they do it a lot in africa um and like people were like oh like that's like really wrong and i put agree on mine and everyone was like really shocked I about that what? agree meaning i don't find it wrong and but the only because i wish i it had more context to it and the only reason why i put that is that um Again, it's like a part of like the African culture, and if women don't like it and are like, which I know women don't like, I've like there's organizations that go specifically to African towns to try to stop that and help women because it's awful. Like they're sewn up down there, they don't have anything. Um, but then as to like what degree am I, do I have the right to judge this other country and this other culture for what they do when like. That's just how their society is. Mm-hmm. I feel like I don't have a right to kind of say like, oh my God, that's terrible. Unless mm-hmm. like there's masses of women that are complaining. like, yeah, then com- are complaining about it and actually need help from outside sources. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of feel the same. It's kind of weird because when you're young, especially like you kind of basically just have to do whatever is being done. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but um but I'm kind of generally in the opinion that, uh, you know, you shouldn't just like step in <laughs> really for most stuff, man. You should basically let people do whatever the fuck they're doing as long as it's not hurting other people. But in this case, it kind of like is hurting other people, you know, like if you're forcefully making people, you know, I guess I get I, I guess I got circumcised. I mean, that's general mutilation, I guess. Technically, yeah. I, I didn't requ- I didn't I didn't I didn't request it. Ten year old girl. Or an old, like a, I think in Africa they do it when they're like, for some men, like when they're like 18, right. entering into manhood. That hurts. Like when you're a baby, you don't remember that. Sh- you know it's painful, but. So but if you're an 18 year old man, though, I feel like that, I'm not going to step, dude, that dude can do it. If he's doing it, that's, you're a man, you can make your own decision at that point, right? Like mm-hmm. no one's forced, like forcing, you can fight back or do whatever the fuck you want if you're an 18 year old dude, so. I don't care about that too much. And probably, honestly, their men are probably way more hardcore than us, to be honest with you, right? Like, we're pussies compared to them, I would assume, because we didn't, we didn't, what do we do to go to, to become men? Eric, did you have a man ritual to become a man? Are you a man yet? I just had to grow hair on my nuts, and as far as I knew, that was... Right. Pussy, was pussy shit, right? Yeah. I didn't do anything. I didn't have to kill a lion or feed anybody. We had to drive a car. Hunt. At 16 years old. <laughs> I didn't have to skin a cheetah or anything like that. Nothing. I've never even shot a gun. So Same. I feel like their men are more. You've never cool. shot a gun? No. Really? No. Oh, wow. Same. Huh. I shot a bow. Oh, bow's fun, dude. Arch, 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 archery's fun. Yeah. When I was uh, in Florida at uh, Keith's place, man, we were shooting the BB guns and shit, shooting cans off the fence and stuff. Guns. Well, no, I mean, he had, he had some real uh, Henry repeating rifles. He had, uh, and I, I've actually shot... Um, at Ellison and Ramsey's a lot. It's 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 fun, man. It's it's you, guys you know. Making your own bullets, right? Yeah, that was that was a really cool experience. That was a fucking cool. I mean, hey, we we fucking we jumped out of a fucking plane. That's pretty fucking manly, I'd say, or maybe just crazy. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, that's just dumb. Like that's just fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. No, I I feel like to a certain degree the only real like coming of age thing that you really see in American culture over and over is like. Well, I mean that that that's what it should be, but it's like getting in trouble with your parents for like drinking is like kind of like an American like coming of age or like road tripping, like going on a road trip, you know. But that's yeah, I mean we're, this is a pretty cushy culture. I mean, cushy. yeah. Virginity, that's yeah. it. Like once you once yeah. you lose your virginity, it's you know game over. <laughs> game over. <laughs> the floodgates are open. <laughs> Huh. I don't know. I do feel like our men are more pussies than probably most of the cultures who have like a becoming of a, you know, like you go out in the fucking wild for two weeks by yourself or some shit, some yeah. place to do that. Uh-huh. In Russia, I'm sure, I'm sure you're a man by the time you're like eight years old, just because you've killed so many bears by hand, but <laughs> so <laughs> wrestled many, so you're many. Or you wrestled a shark or some shit. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I was, uh, I was reading last year. I was reading a book called Black Elk Speaks which is all the first-hand accounts of um, he was like a Lakota medicine man between he, he lived like between the 1830s and the no I'm sorry like the 1850s and like the 1930s and he talked about like when he was growing up boys like 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 biologically were like mature at like 
nine, ten years old. And at that point, like, you know, that it, it's kind of insane. Like, you know, based on, I suppose, your diet and just your environmental exposure and like what you're actually doing throughout your life, how quickly your like maturation process happens. Cause there definitely are like, there's, you know, non anecdotal evidence for like a lot of different indigenous peoples that mature, like way fucking younger than like Western. Cult. And I don't know if that's maybe just that we're not exposed to as much extreme situations or like all the preservatives in our food have something to do with it to a certain extent, perhaps. But you know, I think it also just has to do with like purely expectation wise, like until you go through middle school, then you go through high school you know, until you're 18, you're not even, like, legally a man, right? But, like, if you're going back to fucking, what was King Tut? What was he, 13 years old running the fucking Like, a, like 11 or some yeah. shit, man, yeah. yeah. Totally different, uh, just different expectations and cultures, I think. And even too. still, like, we know now, like, the human brain doesn't mature until... 25 or something. Yeah, like they're, like, mid to late 20s. Years. Like, they're not... We don't, like... I don't want to say we don't function at a hundred percent, but we don't reach our like full peak potential, at least like mentally until, you know, a th- we're a third of our lifespan. Like right now, like mm. most people live to like 80 and it'll take them close to the 30 years old. And, and yet it's also kind of weird though that, um, Oh my God. There's a ghost in the house right now. Um, and yet also, you know, you learn the quickest until you're like 10 or 11 years old. And then your ability to absorb new information is drastically reduced. It's kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? It's a little weird. Yeah, and even like your ability to like heal and stuff, like when you're a little baby and stuff, like your nails grow so fast. Like if you're cut, yeah. if you're sick, you rebound so quick. My nails grow pretty damn quick. Well, you're on that. I'm on the vitamins. Yeah, you're on the vitamins, the vitamins. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess we're on to our next topic. Wait, wait, wait. If I had to, if I want to bring it back to the mutilation thing, I think, though, that just where we are now evolutionarily, like as far as we can tell, we're not getting any better than we are right now. Like in the our foreseeable future, Mm -hmm. maybe we'll lose a couple like we'll drop the appendix in the gallbladder but like we're not getting any you know extra skill sets as far as we can tell and if we are all on the same level playing field and on a global scale we're all at that same like level human wise homo sapiens i think we should tell people like yo you can you can believe what you want but if it's straight up bullshit and it's doing more harm than good to other humans i think as like i don't want to say more developed but a more knowledgeable like subset of our human population on earth we should we should inform these people if what they're doing is like despite morals excuse me we shouldn't fucking disgusting yeah i know fucking filthy pig puerto ricans <laughs> puerto ricans and beer but we shouldn't we shouldn't just you know sit around and tell people just because this is what they've been doing for a while like some stuff i think when it comes to art music literature <laughs> stuff like that sure culturally let's respect that but if you're going around having little kids drink cum or if you're cutting off clitorises and stuff like that, like, and we know it's not doing any good, like, literally, like, if I were to cut off Adela's clitoris right now, that's not going to do shit for her. She's going to be pissed. She's not going to have, you know, like, she's going to have a huge portion of the enjoyability factor of her, like, physical makeup totally removed. And if we can save, you know, or at least educate a subset of the population and stop them from doing shit like that, I think it's our responsibility to at least, like, let people, you know, be aware of that choice. Like, you don't have to drink cum. You don't have to have your clitoris cut off. Like, if you want to for your own reasons, sure, go for it. But, like, at least know that it's, you know 
there's another side of the argument, you know, if that makes sense. I I think that uh well, I see I think that before we have a responsibility to stop people in other countries and other continents doing genital mutilation, we should probably take care of like a lot of the issues that are going on in our own countries and the fact that Preach. that we have like a you know a ridiculous amount of food insecurity and poverty and you know uneducation and like misinformation going on in our own country a lot of molestation as well too don't forget that in our society yeah we we got we got a lot of problems going on right here man we can't we can't carry the weight of the world on our shoulders because we're just going to be another (laughs) we're just going to be another roman or japanese or british or you know you can't extend your influence and your sphere okay i get it we have achieved things in terms of our, uh, you know, our scientific understanding of the world from a uh, a, a, quali- a quantitative like analysis of the world, right? Like we have a lot of measurable data, data that we never would have known, you know, in in in, in non-industrialized uh, situations, but that doesn't necessarily. Um, mean that the experiences of people who believe certain things in cultures that seem fucking insane like don't get me wrong like i think that for for this is extremely like all right it's a very extreme example but so for instance like there are uh you know people that support (laughs) like like animal sacrifice, for instance, in 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 certain ideologies or sects of belief or something. And personally, from the way I've been brought up in this culture, I think that uh, animal sacrifice, you know, you're you're in Western culture, it's a really weird thing. It's associated with a lot of weird pagan ideologies, and you know, uh, n- not particularly condoned behavior in our culture. But that doesn't mean that I think that the people who partake in what they believe is their own way of understanding the universe and partake in, you know, for instance, like sacrificing a chicken in in (laughs) specific rituals in like, you know, like Haiti or the Caribbean or, you know, certain indigenous uh, like belief systems. I'm not going to say that that's wrong, that they should stop like sacrificing animals. I'm not, I don't think it's our responsibility to go there and to change the way that they act um, unless they're like, I mean, if, if they're like, if like the women who are you know undergoing genital mutilation like for sure are asking for help and are asking for other nations to come in and stop what's going on then then you know then that's more respecting the wishes of people than it is imposing your will i think so relating it to a uh, animal ritual sacrifice stuff it's kind of different though man because one thing like they're doing it for uh potentially pleasing the gods and things and that's something you literally can't prove or disprove through science right but when you're when you're saying that they're drinking cum to get them to get to puberty like we already know that's not where puberty comes from right yeah. but the women mutilation thing right like do, do we know why they do that a lot of times, what's the reasoning a lot of times it is religious practices and in, in africa uh that's the cases that i've okay. looked into that it is spiritual stuff so yeah so you can't prove or disprove right. that one either the, when they're when you know what they're doing and then you know why they're doing it it makes the conversation totally different like if you're drinking cum to get to puberty we know that doesn't work if you're cutting off clitorises or you're sticking your hands in beehives to become a man like that is more uh intangible ambiguous stuff that you can't really like uh quantify and um and just in general though dude yeah when you're dealing with like people making people at certain ages do certain things you're dealing with power structures too so if you're getting in there and you're trying to tell these people that what they're doing is wrong you're changing like the whole power structure of their culture which is probably like not uh you know not really in our place to do necessarily or anyone's place because you're literally changing um you know who's in charge i mean I, i would feel like it's kind of a power thing man like who's in charge who's telling who to do what and you know who the boss is kind of in uh in like a kind of underlying theme and you're like you're like changing that man i guarantee you 
the the elders or whatever that culture would not be happy if we start telling all their kids <laughs> that they don't even be drinking cum. Um, just saying. But I think it's fucking crazy. But I, I'm glad I don't live in New Delhi then, too. I'm glad I live in America. Yeah. But again, America. But again, if if for instance the parents of America. the of the of the the boys that are drinking come in order to achieve adulthood, if the parents are reaching out to other nations and saying, right. "Hey, our power structure is not doing anything about this. We, as the people who are seeing it happen, want you guys to do something about it and to step in." That's, that's different. a whole different story, man. That's different. Yeah, I agree. I guess the thing is like that like I'm thinking about is like if they're you know, like I'm sure people in like those old school African countries and like the pretty old school like New Delhi and stuff that believe in the pretty like, you know, obscure cultural practices, like I'm sure they don't know about this, you know, in depth, like the sign, if you told them like right. the scientific method and doing culture like exper- like experiments amongst people and going through your data and your statistics statistics and stuff like that like i'm sure they don't even know how to quantify that kind of stuff mm-hmm. so like i think if they you know as at least like a culture if they can't process that don't you think like maybe not go in there and tell them you shouldn't do that but at least like inform them like hey we've studied this here's our evidence of you know this stuff like if you don't have to be doing this don't you think we should like be inform at least informing them like hey we know you think this but like based on all this evidence we've done you know this kind of experiments in this kind of time and this is what we tested like and it just doesn't work that way shouldn't we be able to at least like tell these people but you're talking about like money and resources and time and things that we had wasting t- i mean do we spend tax money on so much shit already i, I mean like if you think most of the like stuff that was going to be done by like an ngo or something like that like we're not going to have like the u.s government putting five percent of our no, you know gdp towards it. towards unless, it unless you had a private yeah, I think. Industry, yeah, I mean, I think yeah, most of it would be in like most of this kind of. Anyone can do it then. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can, but I think the big thing is the information. Like, we should be giving them this information and telling them, like, look at, like, we know that, like, I mean, it's a big, it's a big <laughs> jump, and obviously, it'll probably be an awkward, uncomfortable jump, like. But this is what we've always done, be it slavery or, you know, stuff like that. Like, we've taken the cultural norms, and then once we realize on a moral standpoint, like, hey, maybe this this isn't the best grounds. Like, this, we shouldn't be doing this stuff, <laughs> you know? Our government shouldn't do anything like that. Not even just want, a government, just, to, just, as a, just as a people. Like, yeah, but, but it's money. I mean, it's either your government or private. It's one of the two. Your government should not fucking be stepping in for that. If somebody wants to jump in like you, go for it, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you were trying to get it for me. Oh. Um, but again, this is a situation where it's I can't I cannot imagine that it's not like, again, the Indian education system or, you know, whatever country that these kinds of things happen in. It's unless it's a, a country in which it's so uh, like politically or economically unstable that there is no formal education system, which, I mean, I suppose in some of the cases for general mutilation, that may be the case. But in the case of specifically this New Delhi thing, again, New Delhi is the capital of India, <laughs> meaning that they probably have a pretty decent formal education system, which, which, which would have access, I would assume, because a lot of there, there's a lot of very prominent higher level formal education like physicists doctors that come from india there is a good higher education system there it's it it to me it's just i can't imagine that they wouldn't have access to the the world's wealth of knowledge on going into puberty and they wouldn't have some say in educating the indian people in their own country you know like but the fact <laughs> of the matter is they 
<laughs> they're still drinking cum. Like all this information. Wait, but they wait, have the wait. Info. Wait, 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 wait. We're basing all this off of one paragraph that Adela read. <laughs> so let's just make sure that we know that we don't know what the fuck we're talking about right now, That's everybody. True. I will get back to you guys. Yeah. And we'll probably get back yes. to this co- topic once I do yes. my research and present this to my class. Adela's <laughs> our insider. She's, she's our mole. <laughs> but the fact that it was in an <laughs> academic text... <laughs> that this was a practice whether they do it that much now but it's a practice within recent years yeah. that's been going on <laughs> like we've got google and shit now you know obviously china there's doesn't. obviously well, really? besides china. china there's some disconnect no, really? Really? there's <laughs> some disconnect with all the wealth of information <laughs> that people aren't getting to where they're still <laughs> drinking cum when they're under 10 years old because they think they're going that's that's their way through manhood. Adela you know? will do the research. I will do the research. This has been a very very long conversation uh, about cum. about <laughs> <laughs> drinking cum. I I would just be interested in some of the other if there are other controversial topics you guys want to discuss because this was pretty interesting. So another topic we were discussing. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't involve cum at all. <laughs> Sure? Is the uh, the dairy cows it's something that we were thinking about about um so you know dairy cows how we get our milk essentially you impregnate a the certain dairy cow and you have to con- consistently impregnate them so that they can produce milk and we get it that way pretty crazy like just essentially taking an animal. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So we were thinking, since it's kind of crazy like that, like if you think about like trying to, like, let's say we had like a bunch of women that we were just consistently impregnating. To make milk. To make, you know, titty milk out of. That's some Mad Max shit. Yeah, crazy. We and, did that with uh, slave women back in the slave days. We would const- they were I called, uh, they were, I think they were called like birthing farms, if I'm not mistaken, or something along those lines. And they just had, um, so what they would do is they would they would breed like what they thought was a really good slave male with uh with a, all the other female worker that was good, and they would imp- keep like impregnating that woman because they thought they were gonna make better workers that way, which is kind of fucked up. It was a breeding farm. With Pretty, that's super crazy. Yeah. So. That aside, <laughs> without the people, obviously it's a crazy topic, like thinking about taking a bunch of humans and essentially constantly impregnating them to get milk out of them to sell to other people. So we were talking about, in the dairy cow terms, would it be weirder to just keep doing what we've been doing for centuries now, like thousands of years now, whenever agriculture, however long agriculture has been around and domesticating animals, just to keep doing what we were doing, or now in the 21st century with genetic engineering, would it be more controversial to continue with our current regular practices, or would it be weirder to genetically engineer a cow that was just con- always lactating and just produce milk like a chicken would produce an egg where it'll produce an egg daily but it doesn't have to be a chick like a fertilized egg where you know we would essentially be taking this being and s- fucking with its genetics totally so that we wouldn't have to impregnate them constantly, but it wouldn't be the same animal that was historically on the earth. Man, that is a whole mess of a <laughs> fucked up scenario. Wow. You know, it almost, in, in, in one light, it almost does seem like it would be more humane to the cow because you're not constantly impregnating it. But at the same time, to a certain degree, as fucked up as that is, it's still like a creature that's on the earth that wasn't well, – oh, man. See, this is the thing. This is the weird thing about genetic engineering because genetic engineering technically 
is just doing in the lab what normally takes thousands of years to do. So it's not like you're really doing anything that... Um, it's not like you're really doing anything that is unnatural because to a certain degree, if anything exists, it exists from nature. So if you have the ability to, uh, to change the genetic makeup of something, it's because it has the natural capacity to also exist in that form. So... What was the start of this topic? So, so he, you want to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so essentially it was, you know, the dairy cows, the dairy industry. We have to essentially constantly be impregnating cows so that they can produce milk and lactate just like a human would. Would it be more controversial to continue the regular agricultural practices to get this milk in a mass like quantity like we do now? Or would it be weirder if we were to genetically engineer this a new cow or, you know, whatever, to where it would just always be lactating like a chicken would produce an egg. They'll produce an egg daily. It doesn't have to be a chick. It won't be fertilized to where it's just always, you know, it would essentially just be like a new species of cow. Like what would be a more significant choice? Mm. That's where we're at right now. Stop your train thought. Yeah. See, but again, I, I was actually just we talked about this in one of my classes last semester, and it was I was I was happy that it was not a very one sided argument about genetically modified organisms because a lot of times there's a lot of hate. Yeah, there's a lot of unwarranted hate towards GMOs. Um, but again, like for instance, gene grafting is the process of taking the genetic makeup of one organism and applying it to the genetic makeup of another to try to change the phenotypic manifestations of the genetics in a positive way, right? Mm-hmm. Cats. Right. So that's that to me is kind of the True. weirder side of things, but <laughs> other genetic modification is not quite as weird. You're more like adjusting the genetic makeup of a single organism. Um by deciding to like change certain phenotypic and genotypic like you know tendencies within the organism it's not like you're like you know it's not like you're mixing uh for instance like you're not taking like octopus genes and throwing it in a fucking cow i mean you might if but that's again gene grafting but like if if we're just talking about like figuring out production yeah like if you if you're figuring out some way though just through like the process of you know, like natural selection of like finding a way to breed a type of cow that only or that that produces milk all the time or by genetically modifying it with ah, man. I don't know, man. I, I I feel like it might be more humane in a certain way. I feel like it's not controversial at all. Right? It's not that big a deal. Whichever one, <laughs> it's not like whichever, whichever one produces better results and has less negative consequences. And I don't feel like either of them have that many negative consequences, probably. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it's not like pl- – it's because it's not like uh, plants and you're fertilizing the cows themselves and all these same things with when you're having genetic, genetically modified um, crops and stuff. It's like these animals that already produce milk for us. <laughs> oh, my God. Nick, Mr. Nick Harris, <gasps> we thought he left, but he's back, and he's cutting things, cutting himself especially. My finger! <laughs> but uh, – but yeah, it doesn't seem that controversial to me. Just whichever is better, right? Like be- more results with less negative consequences, and it doesn't seem like either of them have that many negative consequences. And it cows are already treated not amazingly, so I don't think either of them are gonna be like <laughs> that much of a downgrade if it's uh, keep doing what we're doing, or if they just are always lactating. I do know though something that Eamon told me about because he loves milk so much that they were trying to get the cow genes into human women to produce cow milk. No, 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 yeah, other, like no, 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 other, other way around. It's other way around. They're trying to genetically modify cows <laughs> to produce, to produce human milk because, because, because the nutrients in human milk are what you, ac- are more close to what you actually can process oh, easily right. than cow milk like lactose and, and shit like, right they wouldn't have a problem with, with cheese with human, human with human, human cheese. cheese human cheese okay. oh see this is a good topic <laughs> should we should we start should we start making a, a food commodity out of tit milk like yeah. human tit milk no, titty swiss wrong. the titty swiss <laughs> <laughs> that is disgusting why why that's just weird um that's our product when <laughs> i but if we put it in a cow to do it then is it as weird 
Cause yeah, I feel like I feel like that's a little that's even more strange than genetically modifying a cow, like to just always produce milk. I think that's <laughs> yeah. Like, I, but all, but all you're really doing is changing the nutrient composition of the milk that it produces. It allows it to digest it better. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I personally, for me, I feel like if you are uh out of your toddler years you should not be consuming milk that anymore I, I i truly do feel that way um fuck that milk is delicious eric <laughs> eric <laughs> eric's stepdad peter and i got into a conversation yesterday about how disgusting it is that they're like how fast their family goes through a gallon of milk like peter said it, it's like every two days Eric's mom picks up two gallons of milk. Two gallons. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go through about three gallons a week. I would just like to say something. 2% fat free, though. I would just like to say something that... Not whole. That's, that's, uh, that's good. But <laughs> our oldest brother, Eamon, <coughs> can go through three gallons in a week by himself. And he's oh. one man. Yeah. Wow. One milk-loving milk milk. man. I'm right there. I'm right. There. I could, I could sit right down, there. and drink a gallon of milk. No, you couldn't. Like nothing. You know the gallon challenge? We'll do it Let's right do it now. now. We'll do the gallon challenge tonight, everybody. Wait, 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 wait. Post the results. Oh, do it right now. Wait, do you guys really want to do that? Yeah, Eric will absolutely do the gallon challenge oh, tonight. He's no, drunk enough we, to do it. We need, we need to, to we, we need to go, we need to go get a gallon though. We can't just drink Dad's gallon. I think it's within a time. It's within a half an hour or an hour. No, it's an hour. It's you have an hour to drink a gallon. I'll crush that gallon of milk in three minutes flat. Oh, I don't want him to puke though. I'll push it five. Challenge. Gallon challenge is happening tonight. Um. Anyway, sorry. Can I die from that? No, you'll just puke it out. Perfect. Yeah. No, <laughs> uh. Well, it depends how much volume is already in your stomach. You. There is. It's two, like two gallons, ten minutes. Two ga- no. Two gallon. Two, two gallons, gallons, ten minutes. Two I, gallons, ten minutes. Where did the other gallon come from? <laughs> I'm just putting money where my mouth is. Adela, do well, you, you say you, Fanta or Fanta? I see you're drinking one. I say Fanta. Caramel or caramel? I say caramel. I say caramel. I say, uh, see, I guess I do both. I, cause I didn't even notice. I just said caramel. Say sausage. Sausage. <laughs> sausage. No. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I don't say sausage like that. Sausage. Sausage. Wait, how did you say it? Sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I say sausage. Yeah. I say sausage too. <laughs> Sorry, Mister Mister Nick. Sausage. <laughs> All right, now say. Roof. Wunderbar. Roof. Chicago. 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 No. I was told I have a disgusting <laughs> Chicago accent when I went to school in Chicago. Chicago. Disgusting one? Yeah. So I was like, you have a disgusting Chicago accent. What does that mean? They just said, you're disgusting. And I was like, joke's on you because I grew up in the super suburbs of Chicago. Right. Now say say snacks. Snacks. Is there an Illinois accent? Yeah, yeah there is a Chicago accent. Not Chicago, Illinois. Uh, yeah, yeah, we kind of have like a Midwestern Chicago accent because we live pretty close to the city. I will, I will say though, it doesn't take much going south in Illinois. So Illinois is the kind of state where, Peoria, yeah, if, if you go far enough west, it's kind of Iowa and it's almost like yeah. the western United States and it's like country accent. South, like Illinois, is southern accent, and then yeah. Midwest is like Wisconsin-ish. They all sound I cannot. Here. I it's literally very, yeah. cannot yeah. do yeah. the Wisconsin accent. I cannot. They say like bag. I gotta go get my bag. No, they bag. exaggerate. That sounds about right. No. Oh yeah, yeah I big. Think, I think we all say. Sorry, bag. sorry. We all say bag. Oh no. Oh my God. Bag. Delete this out. No. <laughs> they pronounce words right in Wisconsin. No. Oh my God. Hey, wait. But they call it. They 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 call us fucking play. Illinois bastards like, though. Yeah. Those pieces of shit. I'm just kidding. Wisconsin, Are they like, don't you, don't you know? I'm like, please stop. Oh, that's so annoying. You're getting you're getting confused with the Minnesotans and the Upers. That- you know what's funny though? I was I was watching this old ass TV show from back in the day that was kind of like SNL, but it was Canadian. Really? It was yeah, it was, it's really good. It's 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 where like John Candy and Rick Moranis really? came from. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. but it, it was funny. They were talking about the fact that like Canadian like people are basically like it's like if you took the midwest and just stretched it across canada <laughs> that's basically canadian culture is like is yeah, like the midwest kind of. pretty much yeah i could see that kind yeah. of yeah it's all very homogenous something uh, very off topic my friend kelsey 
she went on vacation a few years ago to, to a tour resort in Mexico, and she ended up meeting her boyfriend there, and he's from Canada. From wow. yeah, and they fly back and forth and visit each other all the time, and I just think it's the coolest thing. Like she met like and started going for a week. On yeah, vacation or they something? were yeah they were at a resort in Mexico for a week, and they just really hit it off. I think they've been together for two years now, maybe. Wow, awesome. Yeah, it's still, long it's distance. Still in yeah. Mm -hmm. She goes to school in Milwaukee. Um, I heard that she wants to move, though, to Canada after school. He's definitely not moving to the United States, though. Why would... I mean, well... You don't even know him. I mean, the U.S. I know, you know. he's not moving <laughs> to the U.S., though. Not, I mean, not if you're already in Canada. They're about... Yep. Did you know that uh, federally, federally, they're about to recreationally legalize marijuana in Canada? That's like good. Not yeah. just decriminalize anymore. They have a really bad opioid problem, like worse than uh, Ohio and uh, like West Virginia and Virginia. They also have seventy-eight legal pronouns in Canada. No, that's actually only Ontario. Oh, good. Thank the Ontario Lord. Human Rights Bill, and it only applies to state agencies. Oh, okay. They also don't treat their First Nations people very nicely there either. Nobody does. Forget them. Yeah, I like America. I wouldn't move to Canada. I might have a house there. I might have a house there because it's beautiful and the culture is very similar and they speak English, quite honestly. That's like some of the main reasons. Like, I don't want to move somewhere where they don't speak English. But uh, I like America. Yeah. Everyone talks shit, but then fucking move. What kind of a question? Fucking move. Yeah, fucking move. Then. Are you quoting some Sam Kinison? <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were. <laughs> Maybe because he wouldn't live in the fucking desert. <laughs> they just, uh, his, it's not a special, well, I don't know what you call it, but I think on Spike or Paramount Network, whatever it's called now, there's a uh, Sam Kinison uh, kind of documentary that is out now. Really? Yeah, it came out end of December, I believe. See, I've only, after you showed me that, like, like particular skit, I watched a couple others, and he's really, he's, he's intense, dude. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, but honestly, I think, like, honestly, Bill Hicks he, got his material dude, from him originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's like, what um, th I was watching a Joe Rogan experience where he was talking oh, about okay. Bill, the fact that Bill Hicks started out doing a lot of the same material. Yeah, yeah. dude, I've watched Bill Hicks, really like Bill Hicks things though. where he's literally sitting on like a wooden lawn chair in like a fucking room the size of this, getting heckled and shit, and he's doing like Sam Kinison shit and screaming at the hecklers and stuff. he was a wild man in his earlier bill hicks was yeah bill hicks man which yeah is, which is weird too because i guess for a while he kind of like went into this rut of his writing where they called him like the sad little poet or the dark little poet or something like that mm. and he just had like he he it was kind of hard for him to like really book a, any comedy because he had like this notion that he was going to deliver the same kind of experience every time you know what i mean mm. Yeah, I do know mostly all comics, it seems like, and most artists in general all have some kind of uh, vice, whether it's alcohol or drugs or or uh, whatever it is. I know his was beaten off. Oh, like, like, really? Yeah, like all the other comics and shit, they like go out to party. Yeah. <laughs> well, he'd be like, ah, now I'm just going to hang out and jerk off. Well, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least it's not hurting anybody else. No, but it's kind of a weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of a weird thing. But uh, go, go the, boy, go boy. <laughs> David Tell was just in town, man. Do you know? Yeah, he was just here, uh, January fourteenth and fifteenth, man. We missed it. Yeah, I was talking to Chopek about it last night. He's seen uh, David Tell before, or this morning. Sorry, I was talking to Cho. Um, Cho's Cho's really the one who kind of got me into comedy stuff in the first place. Cho's always because that's when we used to watch uh, David Tell's Insomniac, which is still an amazing show. It's on YouTube. You can watch it now. He used to pull up. Uh, that kind of shit all the time. You remember that show? Yeah. It was awesome, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you guys ever watch Mr. Show? No. No. Do you guys even know I, Mr. I've show? I've never heard of it. Is, yeah. no. Oh, okay. It's actually really funny. I, I uh, Eamon showed me a couple episodes of it um, a little while ago. It's it's Bob Odenkirk, you know, for like Better Call Saul. And then... Um, David Cross, who's a comedian. Yeah, well, no, that that's their new show. That's the show um, called uh, Bob and Dave, and that's on or with Bob and Dave. That's on Netflix. It's kind of like a like a spiritual successor to Mr. Show. It's just super weird. It kind of reminds me, um, in terms of its, in in terms of its being just so insane. It kind of reminds me of like uh, that Eric Andre show a little bit, honestly, man. Yeah, just totally wild. I was showing Alexander Eric Andre show last night. He'd never really seen it before, man. It was it's some wild shit, right, man? Wild, yeah, super yeah. wild. But John Stables is stuck in a tree. John Stables, wait, what? That was one of the episodes. 
Really? Yeah, John so Stamos is a. Uh, he married like a twenty like something year old girl, and she's pregnant with their his first child. Yeah, and he's like in his fifty. He looks good. I watch him on Fuller House. I know it's. I know Fuller House is a trash show. It's on Netflix. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Um, Dad got, who's the dad in in the original Full House? Who's kind of like Saget. a weird yeah. guy? The yeah. full the original full cast is back except for the Olsen twins. They're the only ones that aren't a part of it. Wait, what what happened to the Olsen twins anyway, man? Cocaine, really? Mostly cocaine. Both of them? Yeah, have really? You, have you seen pictures of them? No. Look up Google search a picture of the Olsen twins now. They they were really pretty girls and they are very ugly now. It's sad. TV show now too. And she looks like she's been on the uh, cocaine as well. I didn't even know that uh, sh- they had a younger sibling. I thought they were the youngest. Huh, that's interesting because uh, I know, too, that um, the actress that played Lori on that 70s show died, actually, of, like, like crack or speed overdose or something. Meth, maybe? Something yeah, crazy. it was really sad because uh, I guess... Um, I want to say it was maybe, like, the third or fourth season of that 70s show when you start seeing Lori less... It's because uh, she had like she was struggling with alcoholism, and she ended up losing a baby, and she like it just got worse, and then she left the show. Wow! And then died from a drug overdose. Yeah, it, it almost seemed like her her real life <laughs> continued on the same trajectory that it looked like Lori's life was gonna go on. Yeah, definitely. Oh my god, dude! They look pretty fucking weird. The Olsen twins, yeah, they do. You should uh, tag that in the R. Yeah, I definitely will. Description. Yeah. Thumbnail. Oh. Jesus Christ. That was scary. That was <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. It was scary. Yeah, John Stamos is uh, the Mazzola's cousin. Yeah, our neighbors. Should look up yeah, uh, John Stamos. Yeah. Is, uh, like second, like uh, Mrs. Like Miz- Mazzola. Yep. Yeah. If you look at their older brother, Nick Mazzola, well, he's kind of. No, not anymore. Not anymore. But when he was younger, he looked more like him for sure. No, look up. Uh, not that that means a whole lot. Oh, there he is. There he is. Yeah, he looks good. He does look like a Missoula kind of. Yeah. You, you can definitely tell that there's a relation. She's young. She's so, She's a model. so Nikki got me um, Warcraft, the movie for Christmas. We were wondering if anyone wanted to watch it. Oh, the movie? Yeah. Yeah, isn't she cute? Have you watched it, dude? She's cute. No, I haven't seen it. You want to see it? Yeah. It's, it's fucking good. Did you, did you ever play any of the old Warcraft games? I watched Justin Bridges play on, like, the free servers and stuff like that. You're not even. You're not even on it. Yeah, when uh, the uh, Arthas the Lich King. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 World of Warcraft. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, uh-huh. War- before World of Warcraft, there was like it was like a strategy game of the Warcraft series, and this. Like Man of Conquer. Yeah. Oh. This this movie takes place. Um, yeah, exactly. It's the very first game. Is right when the well. I mean, you'll see. Yeah, Warcraft was uh, in uh, three games with an extended, like, fourth kind of Frozen Throne one. And the first one, which most people didn't play. Like, mm-hmm. probably most people got started Warcraft 3. Warcraft 2, really. Warcraft Tides 2, yeah, which is all water-based. And then Warcraft yeah. 3 and 4. Um, no 4. Well, Frozen Throne, okay. whatever. <laughs> but uh, this is Warcraft 1, which most people probably don't even know the story of. And they follow it very closely, which is it's really cool. And yeah, it sets up the tone for all the rest it's done really well i mean obviously it's a it's a mythical setting and the some of the dialogue is kind of cheesy but you kind of you know just allow yourself to to spend your disbelief you know yeah let you know because you know it's going to be ridiculous it's a it's a movie of a video game but as far as video game movies go it's easily the best i think video game movie there probably is bold statement well, most of them aren't very good. So do you want me to uh, run to Meyer to get you that 2% fat-free milk? Because we only have whole milk here. <laughs> I don't know. We've got the uh, Costco 2% fat-free milk at home. Yeah, well, your your fucking milk's not it's here. <laughs> so, <Chicken>. But <laughs> trust me when I tell you. I'm the milkman. Yeah. Have I, you have you ever? Oh, Nick, go ahead. I'm sorry. I have seen Eric slam down a full glass of milk. I'm talking about in a pint glass, in like less than two minutes. You think that he can do the gallon challenge? Do you I b- think I do you believe? Honestly, I think I could easily do it. We're asking Adela. Okay. 
Do you believe that he can do the gallon challenge? I do believe that he can accomplish the gallon challenge without throwing up. However, though, he has had quite a handful of drinks. I wouldn't even say a handful, like five handfuls of drinks tonight. And so I would not suggest doing it now, but at a later moment when he has not had so much to drink that he could definitely do the gallon challenge. All I know okay. is I don't want to be cleaning up no fucking puke messes. Me a gallon is a lot of volume. You saw the fight? <laughs> me too, man. I think if well, we one fight, he should get a on, Miami, on the note not of not fucked up, up uh, he like contests, he had two, so back in the day, you you I don't think you would have ever, uh, well, I don't think I've ever told you this story before, but our so oldest brother, Eamon, he once... <laughs> Him and his friend, they initiated a banana eating challenge. Banana eating. And I believe, Alexander, do you know? Chopek destroyed Eamon. Say that again. Chopek destroyed Eamon in the banana eating contest. Eamon ate maybe close to a dozen and puked him out. Chopek was like sitting at 15, 16 and didn't puke. That's remarkable. Did did, did they do a milk drinking challenge? Bananas, yeah. Just 15, 16 bananas. 15, 16 bananas. Nothing. <laughs> you need uh, to put your fucking drinking milk skills where your fucking mouth is. I think on a normal, like a weekday, you catch me on a Wednesday, I'll drink a whole gallon of milk. Right in front of you. Right in front of you. What? Right in front of you. What are you doing tomorrow morning? <laughs> Nothing. I'm, I'm getting ready to drink this gallon of milk, son. Well... I need to see this firsthand. I would, I would literally chug a whole gallon of milk in front of you. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want, I want you to, I want you to tell me that tomorrow I'm gonna witness this thing happen because I'm not gonna believe you otherwise. I just don't know how pissed off I'm gonna be afterwards if I end up puking my brains out. <laughs> but do we, do we know why? What is it? It's the volume. You just can't consume that much volume. Oh yeah, that's some bullshit. <laughs> Well, that's okay. I again, really I need to. I want to see it. Because some guys can eat it. Yeah, I don't really know. I think it's just a conditioning thing. Like, if you've been drinking milk your whole life, yeah. you'll be fine. I mean, I remember. I remember in around eighth grade, freshman year, something like that. You remember Mark Vote? Yeah, I remember Mark Vote. Chad Saban, obviously. Yes. We were hanging out in the um, the parking lot. The parking lot. Uh, We'd always say, you know, we're going to the movies, you know what I'm saying, get 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then just hang out over in that parking lot with some of the old guys. Actually, with, oh, over by Taco Bell and shit, oh, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah Taco Bell and the movie By, by like, Dominic's, too? Yeah. Hangout yeah. Spot right, that was the hangout spot. So, so yeah, we'd go, we'd go there and, um, you know, obviously not go to the movies. And then I'd have to come home and lie about the movie I saw, and it was terrible. But, um but yeah, one of the kids, Mark Vogt, we challenged that dude. He he was as confident as you, man. Tall dude, tall dude. He had a lot of room to fit it. Skinny though, but uh, yeah, it uh, it didn't go too well for him though, man. It didn't go too well. He didn't last nearly as long as even I thought he was gonna last. It's sad. But but the real the 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 milk challenge that I've seen is you have an hour to drink a gallon of milk, which does I think. You could do it, but I want to see it happen. That's what I'm saying. Honestly, if you give me 30 minutes after I finish this beer, I could drink a whole gallon of milk like nothing. I don't. I don't even want to see that. Oh. How you doing? How you doing? Hello. Hello there. Tommy, you look so much older now. Holy shit. Yeah, he's got the long hair. So our good friend Tom Tommy Sanchez just fucking showed up. You want to intro- you want to introduce yourself? Tommy fucking Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> you coming out strong. This is just a this is just a potluck episode. This is great. You just came in and I was trying to tell them how I would fuck up the gallon challenge. <laughs> we might have to wrap this up soon. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Okay, um also, I just remembered that Luke wanted to inform you all that he couldn't make it on for today's podcast because he was busy all day helping volunteer to help a lot of animals at an animal shelter and he's a great guy i doubt he's uh, helping him right now he could have been on here 
I also agree with Alexander. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely say. I also agree with Alexander and Eric. You're a good guy, Luke. Sorry about that. But no comment. He's not as committed as us right now to this podcast. I appreciate you helping the animals that are alone in this world. And to the previous podcast before this one. Is that a homemade topic? <laughs> no. I mean, I made it at home. Peace out, bitches. Go. We're going to watch some Warcraft. Check it. Don't drink cum, little kids. If there's anything you can pull out of this podcast, you don't have to drink cum to go through puberty. You could just, you know, let nature take its course. You're right. And, you know, I think we've been ignoring our our Indian youth audience. I just wanted to reach out to you guys and thank you for listening. It really means a lot to us. (laughs) And honestly, please stop drinking cum. (laughs) Have a great night, guys. I would like to put one final plug. There is a mini series related to this podcast called The Memoirs of Brazil. Uh, check it out on We Speak for the Trees. Subscribe, share to your friends. Let's grow this thing. Peace. Smash that like button. You do that.